Hello and welcome to High Caliber TV, your source for figure and model updates every Wednesday and Friday. So today on the workbench, I'm going to be showing my progress on the two pairs of German SS figures that came out recently. I've got an Alpine pair and, as you can see here, the Evolution pair with their sharp-looking new boxing. I like that. It's a bit cleaner looking than the maps, even though the maps were pretty cool. If you look closely, like the figures of, uh, of Special Forces in Iraq had... Uh, an Iraq map on them, and then for the guys on the Eastern Front, it would be, you know, it would correlate. So, these are the Evolution figures, and I'm going to show you now where I'm at with them. So, this is one of the Alpine figures. This is the NCO. Weapons are all kept separate, along with the heads from Alpine. I've thought about replacing some of the Alpine heads with other Alpine heads from previously used kits. That's the great thing about Alpine stuff, is that typically, if you're using a dragon figure, you know you're going to have to get hornet heads if you want it to look... if you want to add that extra bit of sharpness. But w if you've got enough Alpine spare heads left around, because each Alpine figure comes with two heads, you're just going to be able to interchange them with different kinds of helmets, different facial expressions, yada yada yada. So yeah, I think I'm going to use uh, uh, a head that's Piper with uh, a bandage under his field cap, and so that'll be good for the officer. The NCO, I'm going to use the stock head, the steel helmet. So yeah, counter shading, as you can see, is done. This is the Alpine officer with counter shading complete. And as you can see, there's three layers of counter shading. The first is a very thin layer of Vallejo. It's uh, it's this. It's their German green brown primer, and it's just sort of a medium color. It's it's not gonna dominate anything, but that's just so that the entire figure gets primed. And then over top of that, we spray down the white, and then go back up with the black. So. Here you've got where the highlights are going to be, especially on things like the arms, it shows where the sharp cuts and where you should pull the light with your highlights. Stuff like the typical stuff, like like the folds on the back, raised parts of the tunic. Yeah, excited about that. And now on to the Evolution figures. I think the highlighting, the uh, I mean the counter shading came out a little better when I sprayed it onto the Evolution figures for whatever reason. Maybe I was just a little bit more on my game that at that point. But uh, yeah, as you can see, things like the folds on the back of the trousers, the folds on the arms, they came out really well. And uh, usually you can tell when a project is going to go well when it just, you get this sort of cascading, successive, um, really pleasing aesthetic look to it. And so yeah, all the equipment is stock stuff except for... Uh, his mess tin, and I believe I replaced the canteen with second gen dragon stuff, which is, I mean, oh yeah, and the helmet. The helmet was replaced as well, just so I didn't have to remove it from a casting block. That being said, the dragon stuff had a big mold line down the middle. I don't know where that came out in the casting process for the gen 2 stuff. A lot of my dragon stuff is, uh, at least four or five years old at this point, but, uh, yeah. Takes a lot of cleaning, but, I mean, it looks good. It's 35th scale. They've got some definition to their Gen 2 stuff. Equipment's good, so yeah. This is the last guy. Fellow with the Panzerfaust. The great thing about these two SS pairs is that they've got, they've all got a really great mix and balance of uniform types. And it's going to provide a challenge and a lot of, sort of, you know, a neat dynamic when you put the two pairs side by side. So yeah, he's got his STG-44, which is probably my favorite weapon from the Second World War. I just, I absolutely love the look of that thing. It's so nasty. Yeah. So then we're going to move on, talk about the bases. This is something that I had an idea for, the furrows in a farmer's field. And this is for the evolution figures. As you can see, I've already imprinted the feet into the still wet green stuff when I built up the base. This is like my now apparently the only kind of base that I know how to make now is with cork on top of wood. But uh, it, I mean if it gets the job done, you know, it's pleasing looking. So I then built up this with two or three strips of cork that were then um, furrowed in to the base to make them look homogenous with liquid green stuff. And I think I also used carpenter glue and 
flock to blend in a little bit better, but you can't really see that. I then went around with a stiff old brush and tamped it in to make the ground uneven. And having looked at some farmer's fields and done a little bit of research, I'm going to be putting the dead grass, dead plants in between the furrows rather than having them come up from where the plants would grow. Because this is in, I guess this would be late winter or late autumn. So yeah, everything's dead at this point. Really happy about that base. This is the Alpine one. This is a uh, simply cork and then flock with grass uh, applied with glue in here as well to seal the gap because there was a big gap there when I applied the cork to the base. These bases, by the way, are really fantastic. Uh, I wish we could get them in stock, but they don't sell them at wholesale price. And I mean, you know, that's just business, but uh, heroesandvillains.com, that's where you can get these. We stock their figures, but uh, not the bases, unfortunately. Really, really dig them. Uh, for 35th scale pairs or even single figures, these things are fantastic. So yeah, this is going to come along well. I am waiting, actually, to complete this for our MIG ammo order to arrive. We've got laser cut ferns and their new leaves coming in, in 35th scale. So putting leaves on a base is something that I've wanted to do for a really long time. And I'm excited about this because it's going to blend everything in perfectly. So yeah, thanks very much for watching. Check us out at highcaliberminiatures.com where you can get these figures and many, many more like them. And I will be posting more updates on this build as it progresses. I'm really excited about it. Thanks very much, and I'll see you next time. Bye. So here we are back, and we're looking at the, the blocked colors of the four SS Grenadiers. So this is one of the Evolution figures, and it was pretty, pretty standard stuff. I just posed on a thin down layer of signal brown from life color and then for his trousers I just used Vallejo model air white and sprayed that on you can see with the white because it was thin it actually shows the uh, the counter shading relatively well and that sort of pure white there is going to show the the wear and the tear from from, you know, use and dirt and grime and stuff like that and in the theater quite well, I think, actually. So I'm excited about that. Here's his mate with an overall color of, uh, I think it was, I think it was a mix of these two colors. Sorry about the weird focusing, but there you go. Olive green and IDF sand gray. So those two mixed until I was happy with the way the color was. This is just sort of an intermediate green that's going to be the the field, if you will, for his camouflage smock and for his sort of trousers down there. But we'll begin the highlighting process in the next video. And here's the officer from Alpine. He's been sprayed. You can see there's overspray there, but I'm going to be doing a lot of hand painting on the trousers on this fella because the because of the two colors. And this is the basis for that funky looking, really uh, hardcore camouflage that the Alpine figures are garbed in. I did take a bit of a poetic liberty here and sprayed his smock in the same really cool leaf pattern that uh, the Evolution guys painted in because I just love that so much, sort of the Western Front pattern. And I've got a lot more references for that than I do for this one. So, yeah. <clears throat> anyway, there you go. If you can't have a little bit of poetic license as a figure painter, then you should probably just hang up your hat. Or, uh, yeah. So, there we go. The SS officer from Manjin Kim is coming along. I know I said I was going to have him done for last week's Workbench Wednesday, but the, the shading on the jacket is taking a significant like a lot longer than I expected and I didn't want to rush it and have it look weak for you know the video purposes so so we've got that coming but this project is com spinning along quite well um, all the counter shading paid off and despite the overspray there's gonna be a lot more hand painting to come on this and I'm really excited about these figures so thanks very much for watching and I will see you guys next time bye <laughs>